Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the November edition of AFRA's Sky Connect Leadership Dialogues. And uh, we are joining you from a warm Nairobi, AFRA. Every month, the AFRA Sky Connect Leadership Dialogue series hosts a top executive from the aviation, tourism, trade, and finance, as well as economic sectors for a thought-provoking one-on-one -on -one dialogue on matters relevant to aviation development in Africa. My name is Maureen Kahonge, Senior Manager of Business Development and Communications at AFRA, and I will be your host for today's show. Our guest on today's show is uh, Ms. Oluranti Doherty, the Acting Director, Project and Asset-Based Finance and Head Export Development at the African Export Import Bank, also known as Afrexim Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, for the next one hour, we shall have a very thought-provoking session with our guest as she tells us and shares with the stakeholders what Afrexim Bank does and the very laudable initiatives and programs being led by the bank to support aviation in Africa, the challenges and opportunity in aviation financing, as well as the bank's future plans for the development of the air transport sector in Africa. Expect nothing but out-of-the-box thinking and far-reaching recommendations to shape Africa's aviation. Ms. Oluranti, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you today. And on behalf of the African Export Input Bank, uh, a good afternoon to all the audience. Uh, and we are looking forward to an exciting uh, show today. Thank you. Thank you so much for accepting to take the stage and share with us uh, all the insights that you will be sharing with us on your bank support to develop African aviation. AFRA is delighted to host you today. Uh, before we start, just a couple of housekeeping announcements. We shall have this session in a very conversational format. And uh, we have the question and answer tab is open throughout the show. Please uh, send in your questions to our guest and this shall be relayed in my conversation with Ms. Oluranti. And to start off, Ms. Oluranti, please tell us about what Afrexim Bank does, the vision and the mandate of the bank. Thank you. So um, the idea of setting up Afrexim Bank was conceived in Egypt in June 1987 during the meeting of African finance ministers uh, that were attending the Board of Governors for the Africa Development Bank. And this was triggered by the slowdown of um, economies in the mid 80s, especially in the OECD countries, Eastern Europe, and also the debt crisis that affected Latin America that adversely affected the demand for African commodities, leading to a commodity price shock and resulting in low African export price and revenues. So these finance ministers reached the consensus that dealing with Africa's trade problems, we, are, we are required a holistic approach. Uh, which trade finance was an important element of. And it was strongly believed that it could be used, you know, an institution like a Frexin Bank could be used as a vehicle with which international banks could re-engage and return to the continent and provide trade finance solutions. So a Frexin Bank started operations in 1993 uh, with a startup capital of about 750 million. And uh, the purpose of the bank was to facilitate and promote and expand intra-African trade and extra-African trade. And uh, the bank does this, carries out its mandate by providing direct extension of credits to African exporters, uh, indirect extension of credits through African intermediaries, um, banks, uh, letters of credits, credit insurance, guarantees, and other trade documents. The bank also plays a key role in providing advisory services and uh, credit insurance support. Uh, currently, the bank has total assets of about $20 billion and uh, net income at 2020 financial year of about $351 million. Uh, currently, the bank uh, is nearing the end of its fifth strategic plan, dubbed Impact 2021 Africa Transformed, which is structured around four pillars, uh, the Inter-African Trade Pillar, the Industrialization and Export Development Pillar, the Trade Finance Leadership Pillar, and the Financial Soundness. So just to round up, uh, since its inception 28 years ago, the bank has grown in importance as a multilateral development bank, as evidenced by the rules we've been playing uh, in support of our member countries and in support of um, moving trade finance across the continent. Thank you. Uh, 
I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was on mute. Tell us a bit about yourself and what your role at Afrexim Bank entails. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, as you rightly mentioned when you introduced me, I am uh, um, Oluwati Duati. I'm the Director for Export Development at Afrexim Bank and also the Acting Director for Project and Asset Based Finance at the bank. I currently oversee two strategic uh, departments that support the bank's industrialization and export development objectives. And uh, I have been working with the bank for the last eight years and I oversee the bank's products, like I mentioned, cover uh, the provision of uh, financing support to development of trade and even infrastructure, industrial infrastructure, asset-based financing, uh, which encompasses our interventions to the aviation industry, and also support to uh, correlated uh, sectors like uh, uh, hospitality sector, tourism, and et cetera. Thank you. You're on mute again. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving us a snapshot of uh, what your role entails, and then we'll be delving into um, the specific areas in the course of the discussion. Uh, you've mentioned that the bank uh, facilitates intra-Africa trade in uh, its mandate. Uh, could you please tell us what is the role of Afrexim Bank in socio-economic development of Africa? Thank you. Uh, like I mentioned to you, the bank was created uh, as an interventionist instrument. And the bank has traditionally played this role, stepping up to you know, ensure that you know, when there are areas or issues or periods where the continent needs support, it's able to provide bespoke uh, interventions to you know, get trade uh, flowing across the continent to support key initiatives that is central to its member countries. I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, I mentioned that the bank's role uh, has grown in relation to its uh, position as a multilateral development bank. And this has been evidenced by the establishment of uh, the bank's support in the establishment of the Africa Vaccine Acquisition Task Team. Uh, this uh, team was put together to facilitate the pooled procurement of vaccines on behalf of participating African states at the you know, height of the pandemic, where there was lack of um, you know, uh, access to vaccines for member countries. There was you know, not even discussions on where these vaccines could be procured from. The bank took a leadership role and was a front, uh, or was a key player in the Africa Vaccines Acquisition Tax uh, team uh, that, that, you know, worked together to facilitate the pooled procurement of vaccines. The bank established, put in place uh, a, a financing in instrument to give comfort to vaccine manufacturers, a financing instrument to the, to the tune of two billion US dollars that was placed at the disposal of uh, vaccine manufacturers such as Johnson & Johnson that ensured the uh, procurement of uh, vaccines for our member countries. Apart from this, the bank also stepped in to create a pandemic trade impact mitigation facility, PATIMFA, uh, with the size of about $3 billion to assist our member countries to cope with the economic shocks that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought on to the continent, to their ability to you know, meet up with their financing obligations. And this uh, facility was not placed only at the disposal of governments, it was placed at the disposal of even financial institutions across the continent and uh, corporate organizations. It also had uh, a, a, a harm that focused on supporting uh, the development of uh, uh, the development and manufacture of medical consumables on the continent, uh, which we worked on together with uh, UNICA, uh, which was a, a, you know, uh, specifically focused on facilitating the development of me medical consumables. So these are some of the things the bank has done. Moving even away from the COVID-19 pandemic, the bank played a key role in the implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade a Agreement and uh, the coming on board uh, of the AFCFTA. Uh, the bank has also been able to put in place a lot of um, initiatives uh, and uh, instruments to support 
the advancement of the AFCFTA. Uh, some of these include the Pan-African Payment uh, Settlement System, PAPS, which is the first central uh, market infrastructure for processing, clearing and settling of intra-African trade and uh, commerce payments. Um, this has gone live and uh, is currently on stream and supporting uh, trade amongst African countries without resorting to the use of foreign, uh, uh, foreign uh, currencies as is usually the case. Uh, apart from this, the bank also uh, put in place uh, 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 an adjustment facility to support you know, vulnerable African countries uh, to integrate into the African continental free trade area without, you know, uh, you know, bearing the bond of losing out in uh, key trade deals or in, in being able to come on board this stream. Uh, the bank has also uh, put in place uh, uh, an African collaborative transit guarantee scheme, which seeks to facilitate the movement of goods across borders to promote intra-African trade using a single technology that would enable transit bond uh, to be provided to traders or transporters uh, who want to you know, uh, facilitate intra-African trade or you know, uh, trade amongst uh, several countries on the continent. These are some of the initiatives the bank has put on board that I believe has earned the bank its right of place as one of the leading multilateral uh, development uh, finance institutions on the continent. And just to round up, the bank has just embarked on a $6.5 billion uh, general capital increase to expand our capacity to deliver our mandates and to you know, continue to support the continent in providing some of these initiatives and uh, products. Thank you. Very commendable initiatives, and we'll be debunking some of the specific items you uh, mentioned uh, in, your, in your conversation. And uh, to highlight in terms of the vaccination, uh, indeed, vaccination will mitigate the greatest risk of the spread of the pandemic and is critical for um, Africa to be fully vaccinated, majority to be fully vaccinated, so that we can have a, a, a reopening of the borders uh, in a, in a risk-based and a safe uh, manner. Looking at uh, the trends, the situation on the ground is uh, we are still very far behind in Africa. To date, we are at 5.2%, which compares very inferiorly with other regions uh, that are mostly at 60% and, and above. So we are uh, making calls. There's a lot of uh, action that is going, and it's, it's uh, uh, quite uh, impressive to see that uh, Afrexim Bank uh, has also put in place as part of the, the, the support to the logistical uh, distribution of the vaccine in the continent. And uh, we are, as AFRA, we have our capacity uh, all which uh, we are in the process of uh, uh, working with Africa CDC to see how these two portals, the Africa Medical Supplies Portal and the AFRA Capacity uh, Sharing Portal can, uh, can be linked to create synergies on this logistical distribution so that we can achieve uh, the majority uh, numbers uh, up to 60% by end of 2022. And back to our conversation, uh, to delve into the aviation financing aspect. So um, on aircraft financing, uh, what are the options available and uh, what are the qualifying criteria at the uh, bank that you have as offerings to airlines? Thank you. Um, at Afrexim Bank, we consider the aviation uh, industry a key enabler for intra-African trade and the promotion of industrialization and export development. And these are two of the key pillars of the bank under our um, current uh, fifth strategic plan. Uh, we know that the air transport is, uh, you know, is known to support the flow of key economic activities by facilitating uh, cross-border trade, supporting tourism inflows, investments, uh, specifically in relation to um, availability of finance. The bank has underwritten several aviation debt finance transactions to support African airlines in improving their capacity uh, through the acquisition of new fleet. Uh, the bank has arranged over 2.5 billion for African airlines over the last decade. Uh, in the same period, we have also provided the financing to support certain sectors to sustain uh, the aviation industry, such as the hospitality and tourism uh, 
industry through bespoke programs like the construction and tourism link relief facility. And we are keen to continue to uh, partner with relevant uh, national aviation authorities uh, to you know, do more uh, within this space. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've seen uh, quite a number of transactions uh, and uh, we provided fully fledged project finance debt to support some of these transactions. Uh, sometimes uh, it, it, it's, it's wide reaching really from uh, airlines requesting for uh, financing to support the acquisition of aircrafts to uh, request for uh, airport construction. Uh, the letter we've seen uh, exploring PPP models uh, which relies on airport taxes to fund the, the debt payments. Uh, for us, uh, at the moment, if, if, if I'm going to speak to what the qualifying criteria is for aircraft financing, uh, we focus, like I mentioned earlier, on the provision of debt facilities, and such facilities are available to and privately owned airlines within our participating member states. Uh, we have 51 participating member states right now, and so that means, to, just to let you know, we cover almost the entire continent. And the bank uh, has the capacity to provide senior debt, uh, junior debt, pre-delivery deposit payment facilities, depending on the requirements and the profile of the client. Generally, we require that the clients have at least three years worth of operating history, with a minimum revenue threshold of uh, around $10 million and net assets of $2 million. Uh, typically for our senior debt, uh, LTV, that's the loan to value ratio, ratios range from 65% to 85%, depending on the profile of the client. The tenors typically range from five to 12 years. Uh, in deciding whether to progress transactions, we also consider how we are adding value and ensuring we are not crowding out uh, local financial institutions where they are able to play in, in, in this space. Uh, it is also important for us that we have confidence in the strategy that is being pursued by the client. Uh, we, have, we have capacity and expertise to undertake transactions independently, but we also welcome opportunities to collaborate with uh, other financial institutions, expert credit agencies, depending on the specifics of the transactions. We are always on the lookout for new ways and products through which we can deploy the capital in support of the aviation industry. Uh, one of the things we have spoken about previously uh, is the possibility of an African focused leasing platform, which we will try uh, to, which we believe will uh, be able to address some of the challenges faced by African airlines when seeking to lease aircraft, especially from outside the continent. We are keen to um, establish whether there is a need uh, for this initiative uh, and uh, whether it would be commercially viable. Uh, if the answer to both questions is yes, then we will be keen to explore how we can lead or support uh, the establishment of a, an African-focused leasing platform, working together, of course, with other African DFIs. Uh, if I go on to the realm of um, capacity building and institutional support, because if you understand the role of development, um, development banks, we just don't provide financing. We also provide policy advocacy support uh, and um, technical assistance. So we remain open to committee resources to joint advocacy work with uh, industry stakeholders and the institutions such as AFRA, the African Civil Aviation Commission, International Civil Aviation Organization, IATA, on uh, topical industry issues uh, such as aviation safety standards and SATEM. Uh, we also would uh, want to work to further deploy capital to support infrastructure developments, such as uh, airports, terminals, air navigation equipments, et cetera. Uh, so uh, we, like I said, remain open to collaborations and partnerships uh, to support uh, capacity building and uh, policy advocacy. Thank you. Very well uh, articulated. And uh, talking about the African uh, aircraft leasing platform. This uh, has been a concept that is quite um, um, appreciated in the industry and we are really looking forward to its uh, uh, coming into uh, reality. Uh, the, the previous uh, discussions were that the, the piloting will be taking place in, uh, in the course of this year. We don't know how what's the progress, but uh, when, when in, in your view do we expect to see this as a reality? So for us at the bank, what we currently like to do is to, like I mentioned, uh, review the fundamentals for such an initiative. Uh, 
uh, ensure that we have a feasibility that justifies its viability, its need first, its viability, and then proposes uh, an action plan for its implementation. Uh, one of our key focus uh, into next year is to be able to finalize the uh, work on the feasibility study that justifies the establishment of the African leasing platform. And we will be collaborating with, like I mentioned earlier, partner DFIs once we are able to articulate and uh, get uh, uh, the feedback on its viability and on the next course of action to really set this in motion, we will be playing a leading role in engaging other uh, DFIs on the continent for us to be able to uh, move on to implementing the leasing platform. I know we have all in various um, events and occasions agreed that there's a need for this but I think it's time for us to also support that with uh, uh, data that speaks to uh, the, uh, the need, confirming the need, of course, which we've all agreed, uh, confirming its uh, viability, confirming its mode of operations, confirming or providing an action plan for its implementation. I think those are the things we urgently need to do and need to be our focus in uh, the 2022 financial year. Definitely look uh, look forward to um, hearing more about the developments of this platform, and uh, uh, we, we look forward to you keeping us updated on the developments. Uh, still on the aspect of um, the bank's offerings to aviation, what are some of the infrastructure financing that uh, you have done for airports, ATNSs in Africa? So um, just to speak to some of it, we've, um, like I mentioned earlier, we've been able to uh, provide um, debt financing in support of uh, African airlines, both uh, private and public, uh, to acquire aircrafts. Uh, and we've uh, been able to dispose over 2.5 billion uh, over the last uh, 10 years. Uh, apart from this, we've also supported the development of uh, airports uh, in some of our member countries. Uh, you know, working together on this on a PPP initiative. Um, but majorly our interventions have been focused largely in supporting the uh, airline sector, both public airlines and private airlines. Moving on to uh, our next focus area, which is um, the support to the industry to combat the impacts from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, 2021 is the second year into the pandemic and looking at the impact that this has had on airlines. AFRA estimates that last year, airlines made a loss in revenues of $10.21 billion. And this year, the figure is estimated at $8.2 billion. We had some airlines uh, that were casualties of the pandemic. A total of eight African airlines went either into administration or bankruptcy as a result of the impacts of the pandemic. Airline financial health is a critical issue, not just for the airline industry, but for the wider aviation ecosystem and the economic at large due to the significant economic contribution of aviation. Afran Ayata estimated that in 2020, uh, 2020, airlines needed about $10 billion in financial support. The figures have changed about, at, at this point in time. And at mid-2021, the total estimated amount of the financial relief that African governments extended to their airlines in Africa was only $2.7 billion. And looking across the globe, governments have provided over $400 billion to national and private airlines to support their survival, as well as to support their restart efforts. And uh, we made several calls as AFRA and uh, in partnership with other industry stakeholders. And we still continue to make the same calls that uh, financial support be extended to the entire aviation ecosystem so that we can support the, the restart of operations. And we were looking at uh, various forms of support such as provision of loans, guarantees, wage subsidiaries, and uh, direct cash injections. We're also looking at support in terms of corporate tax, tax waivers and uh, other options such as deferrals and reductions on airport uh, fuel charges and so on and so forth. We had Afrexim Bank and other international and regional DFIs 
part of the coordinated industry effort to support this cause and uh, commend Afreximba for what that uh, was done for, for the last year. And uh, we're looking at what are the interventions, specific interventions that Afreximba Bank made to support uh, the aviation industry, trade, as well as tourism. So what are some of the interventions and uh, in terms of the uh, financial support to the balance sheet to these uh, aviation entities? Thank you. So um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the bank had as its focus how to support our member countries uh, to reopen. Because if any of these our sectors, be it aviation, be it tourism, be it even the economy, is to thrive and survive, first we need to focus on, you know, reopening. And reopening had a lot to do with, you know, uh, getting as much people vaccinated as we can. And um, I would first start with that. How Afrika was mandated by the AU as a transaction advisor, guarantor, and payment agent to support the procurement of vaccines uh, for the for the entire continent. Uh, the bank provided the two billion dollars advance procurement commitment uh, guarantee facility to help the continent to pursue a all of Africa approach to procuring vaccine. So it, it was a continental approach and the financing package enabled the continent to procure 400 million doses of single shot Johnson & Johnson vaccines uh, with a target to vaccinate 40% of Africans. That's after the, the target set by the AU. Uh, as at date, we know that a lot of countries have um, started receiving uh, these vaccines. Uh, and then, you know, rapidly scaling up with regards to uh, levels of in, uh, vaccination. Another thing the bank did during this to, to, to support uh, the continent, uh, to reopen, to ensure that uh, trade uh, thrives again, to ensure that sectors such as aviation, tourism can also safely start to uh, do their businesses and then um, scale gradually uh, to uh, pre-COVID times. Uh, one of the things the bank also did was to support the establishment of the African Medical Supply Platform, AMSP, which you have spoke to. This is a digital platform designed to facilitate the procurement and equitable distribution of um, COVID-19 supplies, create market access opportunities for African manufacturers of medical supplies uh, to also uh, be able to showcase their products and also to, 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 to procure products at the same time. Uh, the, the bank also through the uh, African Vaccine Acquisition Trust uh, is utilizing the platform for the ordering and allocation of vaccines and medical supplies to ensure equitable distribution. And as at June 2021, uh, the AMSP has processed over $65 million worth of merchandise. Uh, vaccines supplied to the AMSP commenced in August 2021. And by January 2022, the number of vaccines uh, that is targeted to be released uh, will be in excess of 25 million per month. In, in, in spite of all this, or even, uh, even beyond this, uh, just the bank took an approach on let us support the continent to reopen safely by ensuring that we get our people vaccinated, we get medical consumables and supplies flowing. We also put in place uh, the PATIMFA, uh, which I mentioned earlier. And uh, this facility, through this facility, for example, channeled about 7.05 billion to African countries towards the containment of the health and economic cost of COVID-19 pandemic. This amount was the second largest source of funding for the continent among development financial institutions globally. Uh, only the IMF uh, provided more funding to support member countries uh, during this pandemic. So this was support that was given, and it was to ensure that our member countries can apply this towards the development or towards the sustenance of um, various sectors, including health and aviation that needed critical support during the time. Uh, and mentioned again, just to retreat the support provided by the bank was in excess of $7.05 billion. Uh, the bank is uh, poised to continue to provide this support 
and uh, you know we are now gradually moving up into the space of uh, private uh, airlines uh, approaching the bank also to be able to support them in restarting or in sustaining uh, their businesses uh, you know as you know most economies are reopening and uh, trying to you know commence business uh, in line with pre-COVID um, um, times or objectives. Thank you. Thank you. Still on the financial support to airline and aviation entities, and you uh, talked to us about the Patimfa having a fund of 7.5.05 uh, billion US dollars. Do we have some African airlines and um, African aviation entities that have been beneficiaries to this fund? So we've received pipe re pipeline requests of about $445 million uh, from uh, five African airlines. Uh, and these are currently you know, in the works, uh, running through the various credit approval processes of the bank. Uh, so the airlines uh, have also been able to reach out to the bank to be able to benefit from this. But as you are well aware, the interventions for the Pantifa you know, first supported the government, supported the financial institutions, and now we are moving towards, uh, you know, rapidly scaling up on our support for the uh, airlines uh, by, you know, uh, converting the 445 million uh, requests that we've received uh, and that we are currently working on in the pipeline. And in your consideration of these um, applications, um, are you giving any preference to the ownership of the airlines that are making the applications? Uh, if an airline is state-owned, if an airline is private or is a mixed ownership, is there any preference that uh, is uh, being considered here? Well, like I mentioned earlier, uh, our facilities are available to some privately owned airlines within our participating uh, member countries. So we do not have, uh, we do not make distinctions or, or leave out any, uh, uh, you know, of either government-owned or private-owned airlines. That's, that's quite um, uh, impressive to hear. So if we have, for example, Oluranti Airlines and we have uh, uh, state-owned airlines, we are all being considered equally. That's us. Uh, what is we are all being considered equally within the guidelines that uh, qualifying criteria that we, you know, uh, generally look at. And this is, we require that these clients at least have at, uh, three years worth of operating history uh, with minimum revenue thresholds of um, 10 million and net assets of 2 million respectively. Uh, we also typically look for uh, senior, uh, looked at providing senior debt with uh, loan to value ratios of between 6 85, depending on the profile of the client. And then our typical tenors range between five to 12 years. And we're willing to consider any request that comes our way, as long as they meet some of these qualifying criteria. Uh, we are really pretty agnostic on whether they are sovereign owned or privately owned. As long as they are within our participating states, we're willing to look at this. And in the criteria, are you also looking at aspects such as uh, airlines, um, competitiveness, uh, business plans, because uh, we might find an airline has been in existence for long and uh, if you look at the, the, the business plan, it might not compare the same way as a fairly recent airline with a solid and robust business plan. Is this a factor that comes into play? Thank you. I think you've led me into um, something I wanted to talk about, uh, about how do airlines uh, make themselves attractive to financiers? What do they have to do? Uh, firstly, I would mention again that the aviation sector remains very attractive to the bank, uh, given its capacity to facilitate intra and extra African trade. Uh, you know, we also know that improved infrastructure has been long identified as one of the key enablers in, you know, realizing the good potential of uh, Africa's aviation sector. And uh, this uh, airport infrastructure in many countries, you know, we know are outdated, are not built to serve the growing volume of passengers or cargoes, the country needs effective aviation infrastructure. Uh, but we also know that for airlines to be able to attract required financing, it is key that they focus on effective business planning and strategy development. They need to invest resources in getting this right, typically because it ensures costly mistakes are avoided further down the line. 
you know, the, an airline needs to consider its route of development strategy, its rationale for aircraft choices, for instance, safety records, skills, expertise of management, you know, its operating track record. All these are critical factors that we as financiers will probe and look at and review critically before, you know, uh, providing financing. And, you know, what one thing we've tended to do in our engagements with airlines is to, you know, request that they have a well-developed uh, strategy in terms of, you know, access market development, in terms of even route development, rationale for some of the aircraft choices we've probed to know why, what, how does it align with your strategy as an organization, uh, expertise and skills of their management to be able to support them. So uh, you're right, this is very critical and this is very much a, a, a required uh, objective uh, for us as financial institutions uh, in, in providing support to you know, airlines uh, across the continent. Thank you very much. And for purposes of our audience who is following us very clean, keenly, uh, we have um, listened to uh, our guests talk about the Patinfa and the criteria for a Flexim Bank in uh, considering the airlines uh, applications for financing. I'll uh, request that uh, our team from uh, a colleague from uh, Afrex Bank to post the link to download. There's a brochure on this um, uh, fund and uh, you can uh, get more information on uh, what facilities uh, you can, uh, what support you can get from Afrex Bank uh, through the brochure. So on the chat box, I'll kindly invite our colleagues to post the link to download that brochure. And uh, before you proceed, we have uh, a couple of questions from the floor. Uh, still uh, on this um, uh, Patimfa um, fund, uh, the question we have, the first one is, uh, does Afrexim Bank provide debt financing private airlines with net assets of less than 2 million US uh, dollars? So um, it depends if these airlines are just startups or, you know, they're just commencing business. But generally, the criteria is what I've listed uh, as uh, net assets of uh, $2 million. And uh, that's uh, a qualifying criteria. But like I said, it would be good to understand which, you know, the, your business and um, if they don't meet the qualifying uh, the minimum revenue threshold of 10 million and net assets of 2 million, then let us look at it and speak, you know, understand uh, your underlying needs. But uh, the, the minimum revenue threshold is uh, 10 million and the net assets is 2 million, respectively. Another one from the floor, still on the same um, uh, item. Does a Flexim Bank give loans to finance individual projects for Africans? Thank you. Yes, we do. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, we provide, um, we are able to uh, meet our mandate of promoting intra and extra African trade to the provision of uh, credit uh, facilities. And this could be in form of trade and project finance facilities. And it's provided to uh, both sovereigns, uh, private, public private uh, organizations, and private sector participants across the country. Uh, but it's generally geared to support the uh, promotion of uh, uh, intra and extra African trade, uh, industrialization and export development, uh, trade enabling infrastructure across the continent. So we are able to do this. Uh, a good thing would be to get in touch with the bank and to provide us with your financing request, as well as to uh, get in touch with us for uh, to obtain uh, the key information required uh, across the various sectors that you may need a financing intervention on. You are on mute. I can't hear you. Apologies. I will take one more question on the same subject so that we can proceed to our next focus area. And the question is, with respect to your lending criteria, how do you handle a request from an African leasing company to seek financing for a sale and lease back to an African airline? And how, do, how does financing from a Flexim Bank compare in terms of its competitivity for, uh, to other funding options available in the market? 
Thank you. So uh, we are able to take on board a request from uh, uh, African leasing entities uh, who want to, you know, uh, purchase aircrafts to lease to African air, uh, airlines. I think one of the key things, like I mentioned, is that they should get in touch with us with their financing request. We'll look at it and then we'll be able to um, revert on what we believe uh, is required from the bank to be able to process this request. With regards to uh, the funding provided by the bank and how it compares to competitors, uh, the, as you know, the bank is a multilateral development finance institution. Uh, we, like I mentioned earlier, are not uh, in the space to crowd out local financing where they are necessary. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily be providing financing at the same rate or uh, as uh, local uh, commercial banks. Uh, we definitely, you know, are willing to provide financing uh, at commercial rates to support. Uh, uh, the development of the sector. We are also willing to consider uh, providing intervention support like the Patimfa that was created, uh, you know, and you wouldn't see uh, commercial banks being able to offer uh, such interventions. So it should not be uh, fair to compare the pricing of our friends and bank with that of commercial banks, but we will be willing to, you know, uh, speak to various uh, investors who are interested in accessing uh, financing from the bank. My colleague would be pasting uh, email addresses uh, on the chat box for interested uh, promoters of airline companies uh, across the continent, uh, be it sovereign or private sector oriented to reach out to us with their financing request and we'll be able to take them through uh, the process on what needs to be done to be able to access support from the bank, either under the parting file or through all that means. Thank you. Thank you very much. And what I wish to mention is that uh, we will be um, uh, sharing the, the brochures even post webinar. And uh, what uh, Oloranti we kindly request is that uh, if we can get the contacts from Afrexim Bank uh, for any inquiries, there will be quite a number of inquiries. I will be seeing some from the chat. If they wish to get in touch with you for more information, then uh, we can share that to all participants as well. Yeah, and uh, we have a comment and question from Mark Tierney, uh, also known as Macharia, a very good uh, uh, friend uh, <laughs> and participant at our various events. And uh, what uh, Mark Tierney says is greetings all. It's good to hear that Afrexim Bank is open to an aircraft leasing platform. Some of you will be aware that uh, we've been campaigning for CAFE, a public private commercial aircraft finance enterprise for African airlines and the Indian Ocean region for 11 years so far. And uh, what Mark says is that if justification for an aircraft leasing platform must be derived from empirical evidence, there may be a problem. And uh, what he says is that an aircraft leasing platform is needed precisely because of the absence of an adequate air transport system at present. It is needed to create conditions for a commercial air transport system with improved economies of density and uh, scale to emerge to support African economies and jobs growth at a time of unprecedented population increase. Uh, what is your reaction to this? Because what you mentioned earlier is that uh, Afrexim Bank is uh, taking a data-based uh, decision-making approach to evaluate the viability so that we can proceed with the initiative. But uh, um, to Mark's comment, what would be your reaction? Thank you. I think um, we've interacted with Mark several in the past with regards to the uh, aircraft leasing platform. And like I mentioned earlier, we have, um, you know, all in so many ways agreed that this is essential and required. But then uh, our approach at Afrexim Bank is that we need to put in place a plan of action to guide the development. Even where, you know, uh, he alludes to the fact that there are not em enough empirical data or evidence that could support this, we still need to put in place some form of uh, you know, roadmap or viability that sort of 
you know, speaks to our ability to pro progress in implementing an aircraft leasing platform. And this is an approach that our Fredson Bank has tended to do or use uh, in all our interventions. We would not just delve into, you know, developing or setting up any initiative without first, you know, looking at it properly, assessing it and being sure of what, uh, you know, the viability and the roadmap for its implementation. And this is what we have taken a position on as an institution and what we intend to do. And uh, we, 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 we will be pursuing this, like I mentioned to you, uh, in 2022 with a focus on answering these questions for ourselves and engaging partner DFIs in pursuing it. Thank you. Moving on to our next focus area, which is the attractiveness of uh, the aviation sector to financing. The airline industry is capital intensive and requires large sums of money to operate effectively with very unmatching razor thin margins. The aviation industry also is very susceptible to industry shocks, as we have seen from various economic crises and pandemics. This notwithstanding, the sector is a huge contributor to economic development. The sector contributed $63 billion to Africa's GDP and about 7.7 .7 million jobs before COVID. And uh, looking at the impact of COVID, we have 4.5 million uh, million jobs and uh, an equivalent of 37 million in GDP at risk. Therefore, we still need to support the industry um, and to give uh, consideration to the airlines as they uh, restart the operations, as well as the other entities in the um, entire value chain. So my first question, financial institutions see airlines as a high risk business. Is this any different for Afrexim Bank? Thank you. Um, I think I have mentioned uh, earlier that, uh, you know, for us at Afrexim Bank, we see the, you know, the airline sector as very critical, uh, very critical to the support of intra-African trade, very critical to the promotion of industrialization and export development on the continent. And as such, uh, we, we see it as a sector that we would, of necessity, have to support. Uh, I mentioned to you uh, about uh, how the bank was created and it being an interventionist institution, an institution that comes in when, you know, others, you know, are really not, you know, at the forefront, you know. And we've demonstrated this with even the COVID-19 pandemic being the leading financial institution or the only financial institutions we will support the continent uh, with regards to reopening of its economy, providing 7 billion uh, worth of funds to corporate sovereigns and uh, uh, financial institutions. We've been able to, you know, justify this with the 2 billion uh, a, a facility put in place to, to, to facilitate the procurement of uh, COVID-19 vaccines. And so we will also are willing to continue to put this out there uh, to say that uh, we would be willing to support uh, the aviation sector to get back on its feet, uh, to be able to gradually start opening up and scaling up to pre-COVID uh, era uh, operations. So for, an, uh, for us, we wear different hats. We don't see things uh, mainly from uh, a commercial perspective, we see things from a commercial and developmental perspective. And due to the aircraft in, or aviation in sector's importance to the continent in facilitating intra and extra African trade, it will of necessity continue to remain a priority sector for the continent. We will be providing support, not just to airlines in acquiring aircraft, well, we will also be willing to provide financing for the development of infrastructure, for the modernization of infrastructure to really boost uh, the aviation industry uh, across the continent. Thank you. Uh, you've talked about uh, various areas that uh, the airlines could improve their attractiveness. Uh, you mentioned about the business plan. And just to, to, uh, to highlight that we had uh, the AFRA 
ninth aviation stakeholders convention in May. And uh, from the panels and uh, the interventions, one of the recommendations that was made on the uh, airline and airlines financing was that airlines should increase their bankability by having robust uh, business plans. So what else should airlines, airports, and other entities in the aviation sector do to increase their attractiveness in obtaining financing? So, um, like I mentioned, one of the, you know, we, we spoke to the business uh, plan, we spoke to, you know, also, uh, you know, engaging financiers uh, from the onset. I think there needs to be an early engagement with financiers for most aviation uh, sector deals that have gone very well, uh, that I've been aware of. There has been an early engagement of financiers to share with them, their, uh, with these um, players sharing their plans uh, on what they want to do and working with uh, the financiers to put in place a viable structure that could, you know, enable them operate sustainably. Because sometimes, you know, you can think all you need is a type of financing instrument where if you were to share your plans and have a sit down with in financiers, they could bring on board solutions to, you know, ensure that, you know, you are able to operate and not only operate, but operate sustainably. There are so many financing instruments that could be deployed, but it needs, there needs to be an early engagement of financiers. There needs to be, like we mentioned, the World Package Business Plan. There needs to be, you know, uh, an implementation plan attached to the business plan that shows that you, you've not just thought of the business plan, but you are also clear on how to implement it. Uh, there needs to be, you know, uh, support from even us as DFIs uh, in terms of policy and advocacy support to ensure that, you know, airlines uh, or the airline business is able to, or the aviation sector is able to operate under uh, uh, an enabling regulatory environment. And then there's need for technical assistance and capacity building support. Uh, and, you know, maybe collaborating with AFRA to engage some of these uh, organizations to speak to them directly one-on-one -on -one. out of just uh, not necessarily a planning of the presentation, but maybe co-organizing workshops to scale up capacity uh, for the industry players to be able to access financing, maybe uh, some of the tools we could, uh, you know, um, we could uh, explore. Uh, so I, I think these are some of the things that I think we can do to ensure that, um, you know, airline businesses are able to operate and um, are attractive to financiers. And then lastly, you know, I would want to reiterate the need to upscale and modernize uh, the infrastructure that supports the sector across the continent. Uh, there will also be need to, you know, for this to come in world constructed business cases with, uh, you know, high levels of management and ongoing assurance because most of the time you see the infrastructure support coming from the government, government spreading the request for uh, the modernization or upscaling of this infrastructure or without well-constructed business cases or management, uh, operations and management plans and the uh, ongoing maintenance and policy assurance. Uh, to ensure that these uh, projects are well procured and to avoid unnecessary delays or cost overruns. So some of these things are things we need to explore together. I think it's going to be an ongoing partnership and I think it's a partnership we will need to uh, further develop uh, to and hold and support key players within the aviation sector, uh, you know, through various um, means as identified. Thank you. Thank you. We did looks forward to continued collaboration with Afrexim Bank. We did a couple of webinars together in 2020, and uh, we will certainly be uh, looking up to uh, various um, areas where we can further collaborate uh, to develop the industry, just with Afrexim Bank, but with other DFIs and other entities in the in the industry. And still on attractiveness, um, you, you mentioned your perspective on what the airlines should do to, uh, to be more bankable. What is your take on the aspect of airline consolidation? 
uh, would the, the bank be looking at uh, supporting airlines who need to consolidate? And once airlines are consolidating, uh, is, is this uh, one of the approaches that can make them more attractive and supported uh, financially? Thank you. Well, we believe that um, you know consolidation generally could help strengthen the industry. And uh, where there is uh, opportunity for airlines to consolidate, to be able to uh, thrive and to be able to meet the market needs and demand, uh, we would also be willing to sit with the various players to provide uh, our interventions from our advisory services to debt financing, uh, to uh, technical or policy advocacy support as may be required. So it's, it's something that we also believe should be explored uh, to see where we can take advantage of economies of scale uh, coming together to be able to at least uh, operatively and uh, adequately serve uh, the market needs uh, of various uh, uh, customers or clientele. So if you had uh, countries or airlines coming together to serve a to as an uh, coming together to create an op uh, within a region and to serve that op effectively to efficiently uh, deploy their assets and to be able to operate and run uh, in a sustainable manner yes we'll be willing to look at this as support thank you very much and uh, moving on to our final focus area which, which is on the single african air transport market and the african continental free trade agreement um, the SATAM and uh, the FCFTA are uh, very much interrelated. Uh, these are among the AUC Agenda 2063 pilot projects. The benefits of impl implementation of SATAM go beyond just impacts on the aviation industry to consider the wider social and economic implications, such as uh, increasing traffic, the passenger benefits, regional and continental connectivity, tourism, trade, investment, job creation, and economic development, as well as social mobility. And on the SATAM, we have a joint prioritized action plan by the industry, which, is, uh, which has six pillars. And AFRA is part of this uh, joint prioritized action plan. There are KPIs, which are reviewed annually so that we can keep on track on ensuring that we move forward with the implementation of SATAM. As of uh, the last month, we had uh, 35 African states that have signed up. And uh, looking at aviation financing, this is the sixth pillar of this joint prioritized action plan. And my question to you will be, um, what actions would Afrexim Bank recommend to facilitate access to sustainable funding to support the SATAM implementation? Thank you. So for us um, at Afrexim Bank, we believe that both the SATAM and the EFCFTA uh, as you mentioned, you know, have a, uh, an aligned goal of uh, aiming to gather the liberalization, Ghana and the liberalization of um, air transport in Africa and economic good for the continent. Uh, their initiatives are very complementary to each other. Uh, all that the ACFCA trade facilitation measures are slated to cut red tape, reduce tariffs, so the by customs procedures, which are expected to drive up to $450 billion in income gains by 2035 and connect about 1.3 billion people uh, across 55 member countries and power deep economic reforms and good for African nations. Uh, this uh, you know, is the, one of the first flag, flagship projects of the African Union that is aimed at, as you mentioned, creating a single unified uh, transport market for the continent. We believe that the SATAM is critical to the AU's uh, integration agenda, uh, in, in, in particular crucial to logistics infrastructure for the successful operation of the AFCFTA. And it's complemented by its protocol that is aimed at creating a continental uh, market for goods and services. Uh, at Affecting Bank, we believe a better connected uh, uh, Africa uh, with countries and regions being connected to viable air transport industry uh, would be a good vehicle to boost in intra-African business, trade, tourism, as well as cultural change. I uh, believe that the free flow of um, the movement of people as 
desired or boot initiate creates a single opportunity for African airlines. Uh, for us, we are a strong proponent of the ideals of both uh, AFCFT and SATEM. Uh, on SATEM, the bank will continue to play an advocacy role in treating more African states to sign up to the solemn commitments and to implement the required national policies to bring it into effect. We are willing to collaborate with uh, KISS players in the aviation industry to be able to do this. Uh, we, on our own part, we have also been working on uh, several initiatives that are facilitating the attainment of the objectives of the AFCFTA. Uh, this include the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System, PAPS, which is a revolutionary market uh, infrastructure to enable instant cross-border payments in local currencies between African countries. Uh, we've, uh, the PAPS is expected to domesticate intra-regional payments and save the continent about $5 billion in payment transaction costs every year. Uh, apart from the PAPS, uh, we've also put in place the African Continent Free Trade uh, 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 Area Adjustment Facility to enable vulnerable African countries adjust in an orderly manner to the sudden uh, significant tariff revenue losses that could occur as a result of the implementation of the ASCFT agreement. Apart from this, we are willing to continue to provide ongoing technical and cooperation assistance. And as I mentioned, what we've been able to do uh, working with the AFCFTA Secretariat, we are willing to provide uh, at the doorstep of uh, various aviation, key stakeholders in the aviation industry uh, to support uh, this implementation of the SATEM. We commit again to play a leading role when uh, on advocacy uh, to entreat uh, African countries or states to sign up to this commitment. Uh, we also come, uh, are willing to consider uh, partnering with uh, key aviation stakeholders like AFWA uh, to explore initiatives to uh, rapidly uh, promote the you know, um, implementation of certain. Thank you. Quite uh, a, a collaborative approach and a number of initiatives to uh, move forward, SATAM and uh, FCFTA implementation. Uh, the, uh, Africa we want, the interconnected Africa is uh, our main uh, objective, our main goal. And uh, looking at um, the Pan-African payment and, and settlement systems, this will be a platform that can actually revolutionize the, the, the industry because uh, one of the main challenges that African airlines face is uh, the issue of blocked funds in, in certain states. They are unable to repatriate uh, uh, their revenues from uh, countries and such a platform in as much as this is uh, put in place for the continental free trade area, uh, as the aviation industry, we are very much keen to see how we could plug into this. And uh, uh, we, the question will be, is there a possibility of uh, expanding uh, this to just go beyond uh, the continental free trade uh, agreement to, to SATAM? Definitely, like I mentioned, though it's created to support uh, the uh, achievement of the objectives of the AFCFTA. There is a clear alignment between the objectives of the AFCFTA and Saturn. So yes, uh, I'm sure we can uh, look at uh, ways where the PAPS could, you know, provide uh, support to, you know, ensure that, you know, payments between or within the continent uh, aviation players be done through the PAPS. It's, it's 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 not something that cannot be looked at that cover I'm sure we might if we were to put you in contact with them would be able to explain to you that indeed this is a, a key uh, platform that uh, the aviation sector can leverage uh, to be able to you know uh, solve this headache that it currently has with regards to remittances of fees or of funds uh, within uh, uh, the African uh, aviation uh, industry. We'll definitely be with uh, Flexim Bank to see how this could be put in place. And um, mm -hmm. one final question from the floor is uh, from Prodigy Avia Solutions. Uh, Captain is uh, um, asking, what is the position of Flexim Bank on capacity building, which is hampering critically 
the development of the air transport sector in Africa. Uh, Prodigy and Afra are collab collaborating on the implementation of a major ATO in Western Central Africa, and a major announcement will be made at the Dubai Air Show in the next couple of weeks. Over the past few years, has Afrexim Bank received requests or applications for financing of capacity building projects? Thank you. Um, I think you alluded to it when we, in the course of uh, uh, your conversations on this platform, where you mentioned that um, Afrexim Bank had collaborated with Afra uh, to, you know, host a series of uh, capacity building webinars uh, in 2020. Uh, for aviation industry stakeholders. So it's something that we've already been doing and which we'll continue to uh, consider uh, when these requests come our way. Like I mentioned to you at Afrexim Bank, we see the aviation sector as key to supporting the bank's mandate of promoting intra and extra African trade, as key to su supporting the fulfillment of the objectives of the Africa continental free trade area. So uh, in, in view of this, uh, it, it is a sector that we would be supporting in terms of providing not just debt financing, but also uh, technical capacity building and, and, and uh, advocacy support to where necessary. And we've been doing this. Thank you very much. And in terms of capacity building at that level of uh, sensitization of the industry, of developments and uh, opportunities available for uh, financing that could help in their restart, that one is uh, quite commendable. What um, we will be looking at from this question from uh, a, a prodigy is um, in terms of major projects, uh, for example, in uh, the uh, putting up of a training center, has uh, the bank received any proposals uh, from entities that would wish to set up a facility for training? Because the concept behind uh, the Afra Prodigy ATO is to set up this uh, facility and it will be cheaper for airlines to do the, the training instead of going out of Africa, uh, because this will be uh, putting the facility much closer to the continent. And we are the location that has been selected quite with the airlines that uh, are, are, and uh, it will really um, meet the needs of cost effectively meeting the training um, needs that they have. So uh, do, do you have any uh, capacity building projects uh, uh, that you have financed or received requests or are you also open to finance training projects? in such magnitude? We've not received a request to finance a training project, but uh, if it is a training project that is aligned with the uh, training aviation industry specialist so, and uh, supporting this training on a continental level, I think if this uh, is put together, it give you our opinion on our ability to support uh, and on which sort of support we are able to render. We'd be happy to uh, make an introduction between Captain Sheju and Afrexim Bank for further uh, discussion on the matter and to explore opportunities that uh, and possibilities of financing this laudable initiative. Uh, we have come to the tail end of our discussion and before we close, I will not let you go without having your final thoughts. Uh, what is your key message to airlines, aviation companies, states, partners, and other stakeholders as Afrexim Bank? Thank you. Before I just uh, state my final thoughts, I would like to just uh, bring to the attention of uh, key stakeholders in the aviation industry that the bank is uh, organizing the second Intra-African Trade Fair. Uh, this, the Trade Fair is a key event to boost trade in Africa and uh, no other event brings together more professionals under one roof. Uh, in 2021, the Inter-African Trade Fairs team will focus on the AFCFTA, a single market for goods and services across 55 countries aimed at boosting trade and investment. The IATF 2021 will be held in Durban, KwaZulu, Natal, South Africa, and uh, we use this opportunity to invite all key stakeholders within the aviation sector to register to attend this event. 
interested attendees can register to attend uh, at uh, www.interafricantradefair.com. Uh, it's an event that should not be missed. You'll be able to come into contact with various key industry players uh, within the aviation sector and in other key sectors, uh, governments, uh, businesses, international organization, and international investors. So it is uh, a, a, an event not to miss. Thank you. So going to my final thoughts, uh, while it's evident that aviation in Africa has the potential to fuel economic growth, several barriers we know still exist. Uh, and uh, we know there's weak infrastructure, there's uh, poor connectivity, there's lack of liberalization. Uh, these are some of the challenges. But I think uh, in the current environment, it is more essential that African airlines can proactively rationalize their fleet to ensure that efficiency and use of necessary costs. Uh, the pandemic, as I said, is more strong need for connectivity and the reduction uh, in reliance on non-African carriers to connect Africa with the rest of the world. Uh, the prolonged restrictions in Europe, America, it is meant that African airlines that have thrived during this period are those that have really good regional network within the continent. I know there has been so many effective regional and sub-regional collaboration uh, that have formed in response to the pandemic. Uh, we believe that there is an opportunity to capitalize on this momentum to accelerate ongoing work on key regional initiatives, such as the SATEM. Uh, there's also need for African states, airlines, and all stakeholder institutions uh, to collaborate effectively to ensure the full implementation of the SATEM within the shortest possible time. And I have already mentioned that Afrizim Bank uh, stands uh, ready to partner with uh, key industry players like Afra to support this implementation. Uh, we know that uh, the, the airlines that have um, thrived or fairly well have been those that have appeared very nimble. Some of them have also had to refocus their activities to provision of cargo services in, at the height of the pandemic. Uh, so, you know, it, this also brings more into focus the need for comprehensive business planning and strategic development, which should be at the core of activities of, L, activities of all airlines. We want to advise airlines to keep this as key focus uh, as they conduct their business, because when you have a good business plan and a good strategy, uh, you are able to circumvent and prevent uh, easily avoidable errors or mistakes. And also the cost base of African airlines also requires a lot of attention. We believe it's important that African states should support the quest to improve competitiveness of African airlines by striving to review the tax composition of African airfares, especially in, in instances where these sums are allocated to other purposes rather than being in, reinvested in the aviation sectors. Uh, just to conclude that African Bank remains committed to supporting the African aviation sector to its current avenues of intervention, providing advisory support, providing debt financing from project preparatory to um, eventual debt financing. And we welcome the opportunity to work with African states, airlines and stakeholders uh, to facilitate the continued development of the sector. Thank you. Very powerful parting shot there. Certainly, a number of um, actions that uh, we will take, uh, the industry should take uh, for us to achieve the Africa we want. And um, taking the opportunity to also mention that the, the event, uh, the Africa, um, Intra Africa Trade Show, has been, uh, the, the link has been posted on the chat box uh, for you to register. Uh, also, AFRA is holding the 53rd Annual General Assembly from 16. Nine, uh, uh, 17th of uh, in virtual format. We also invite you to register for a very exciting assembly that will discuss uh, strategies for the restart. And uh, the link also has been shared on the chat box. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for sitting with us through the show. Thank you uh, out to our guest, Mr. Luranti, for sharing with us all these uh, insights. For those who would wish to contact Afrexim Bank, we'll be happy to share the contacts with all participants. And we certainly do look forward to engaging various industry stakeholders with uh, our audience so that we can continue to uh, develop the aviation sector in Africa. From AFRA Secretariat, 
it's a warm goodbye. Bye-bye.